Did you know that in Batman Arkham City, if you select Robin in the challenge mode and choose the Joker's carnival map, there is a chance that the Joker will say this. What? Didn't I kill you already? No? Well, there's always time, right? Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Robin! So the Joker will comment that he thought he'd already killed Robin. This is because the Joker had killed Jason Todd, a previous Robin in the Batman comics, and not this Robin who is Tim Drake. You know you've got a problem when you can't keep track of who you have and haven't killed. Hello and welcome to Hidden Video Game Details, the series that aims to show you things that you may not have known about your favourite games so that you can look really clever in front of Sid from Ice Age. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe and do all that other YouTube algorithm stuff. And without further delay, let's get started. So a couple of episodes back, we entered the cave digging world of Deep Rock Galactic. Even then, I had a sneaky suspicion that the rock smashing FPS was going to be a treasure trove of details. And you guys have proved me right. Now, in that episode, we discovered that kicking barrels into your dropship's launch bay would cause mission control to tell you off. Please just let the barrels be. As fun times go, there are better options available. Well, loads of you mentioned that you can also prompt a response from Mission Control if you manage to kick a barrel into the dropship itself. Here's all the dropship barrel dialogue that I've heard so far. Seriously? You want to bring barrels with you during an orbital insertion? You cannot bring barrels with you on missions, but I applaud your efforts. The seats in the drop pod are meant for employees only, not barrels. It breaks my heart to tell you this, but no, the barrel will not accompany you on your next mission. Now, I spent a good 45 minutes kicking barrels into the dropship, so I think that this is all of the dialogue that can be triggered by trying to bring barrels on a mission with you. But if I have missed one, then please let me know. Now, all that rock smashing and giant bug killing is enough to get anyone worked up. So it's very important that your character takes some time to do something that they enjoy to relieve the tension. If you head to the bar and use the jukebox, not only will your character cut some serious shapes, but those killer moves will once again incur the wrath of mission control. It gems my ass. Classy moves, team. Now quit it. You know, you're not being paid by the hour. Get to work. That is real music. You boys better be better miners than you are dancers. So despite being a battle royale game, Fortnite has quite the backstory. Instead of just dumping you on a map with 99 other players, Epic wants you to be invested in the characters and world of the TikTok dance simulator. This is usually shown in cutscenes, but there are some very special situations in game that reference the wider Fortnite story. This is Dr. Sloan who at the end of season 2's Operation Skyfire was revealed to be evil. Now, what does every bad guy or girl need? That's right, a good guy or girl to stop them. And that's where Jonesy comes in. Jonesy is arguably the face of Fortnite, and he's also the go-to guy when it comes to stopping wrongdoers in the Fortnite universe. With that in mind, let's see what happens when Dr. Sloan, the baddie, runs into Jonesy, the goodie. <sighs> So I think Jonesy sums this meeting up perfectly. This is indeed awkward. If you guys know of any other cool details like this one, then please let me know, because I personally find them really cool. Now, when it comes to showing off the graphical prowess of your brand new console or graphics card, a good place to start is a sports game. Never have sweaty men look so good as they do in a sports game on a new generation of console or graphics card. Take NBA 2K22 for example. The game looks almost real when in motion, with players moving and behaving like their real life counterparts do whenever they take to the court. It's not just the running and shooting that is replicated to near lifelike levels in 2K though. Even some of the players' signature moves are present in the game. For example, whenever you take a free throw as Golden State point guard Steph Curry, he will do this. And so he hits the technical free throw. So Curry will chew on his gum shield. 
just like he does when he takes a free throw in real life. Again, if you know of any more cool details like this one from sports games, then please let me know. Now, after featuring some really cool details from the excellent Prey, I had an itch to play another arcane game that I've spent nowhere near enough time with. For some reason, Deathloop just never clicked with me, even though I've loved all of Arcane's previous games. I don't know why that is, but recently I've made an actual effort to spend more time with Deathloop, in hope that I finally fall in love with it. I'm not at that stage yet, but if I keep finding little moments like this next detail, then it won't be long until I'm head over heels. If you head to Updarm during the afternoon, you can do this. So this Rube Goldberg-like setup that results in the death of a cultist doesn't always appear here. I don't know exactly what I did earlier in the day to trigger this event, but I'm hoping that the more I play Deathloop, the more moments like this I find. Next up is another hidden detail from 2019's Modern Warfare. This particular missable moment can be found at the very beginning of the game. When you're asked to call in an airstrike, if you refuse to do so, this will happen. No Russian military presence. Call it in, CIA. Echo 3 1, call in that airstrike. Drop it like it's hot, CIA. Call your thunder and let's roll. Echo 3 1, call in that airstrike. Calling in fire, mission 3 1. Blue Viking 5, Hitman 7 1. Enemies in the open. You are cleared hot. So after repeatedly asking you to call in the strike, Hitman 71 does the job for you. I must admit, it never really crossed my mind to not call in the airstrike, so kudos to any of you if you knew this detail already. Now, when it comes to hired killers, you could argue that Agent 47 is one of the nicest guys in the business. Almost every target the shiny-headed assassin takes out is a horrible person. Take Jordan Cross, for example. On the surface of things, he's a rising rock star who was born into a wealthy family. However, it's soon revealed that Jordan killed his girlfriend and used his dad's money and influence to escape justice. This of course makes Cross a prime Agent 47 target. Now despite being seemingly desperate to avoid the repercussions that come with killing someone, you can learn of Cross's past discretions by taking a look at his dog tags. If you use Hitman's handy camera and zoom in on Cross's neck, you can see that the dog tags read murdered GF prick. I'm guessing that Jordan has never bothered to actually read the dog tags because he's that rock and roll. So the final detail for today's video comes from Grand Theft Auto 4. During the not so fast mission, Louise finds himself in the Libertonian Museum. Well, if you head down to the ground floor, you can find a very interesting sign. So much like the Gantt bridge sign in GTA San Andreas, the sign next to this T-Rex skeleton explains how many polygons we use to create the in-game model. It's a great detail. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, then leaving a like is really appreciated. If you are a fan of hidden details and Easter eggs in video games, then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.